If you'd like to support this channel, we invite you to check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much. Hey, what's up guys? So it's been a few weeks since we've done a video. There's just been a whole lot going on for us. A lot of really big life changes that we'll talk about in some other videos. But the thing I want to talk about this week is our my grass is completely overgrown. It's been over a week since I've mowed. And I know it's going to be an issue for a lot of you guys because right now it's been raining for several weeks straight here in Texas and in other parts of the U.S. So what do you do when your grass is overgrown like that, especially when you're cutting with a reel? You know, it's a little bit different with a rotary mower. Rotary, you're mowing high, you can go through there and just hack it down and usually it's okay. But when you're mowing with a reel, that changes the game a little bit because you're at least an inch or lower on your height of cut. And so as time goes on, it gets harder and harder to maintain that how to cut whenever the grass is overgrown. You know, it may be some of you out there, you may travel for work during the week, so you can't mow every three days. So what do you do, you know? And so I'm gonna walk you guys through how I get the height down on the putting green without causing any damage, and just how I treat my entire yard the same way. And I'll also walk you through a solution I've come up with that works really well for you guys that either don't have time to mow every, few days or you're traveling or you're on vacation or the weather impacts your mowing schedule. So I'll just walk you guys through how to do that and show you a solution that I have. So we're out here at the putting green and it's pretty tall. It's about an inch tall and normally we've been mowing at 1406 which is just above an eighth of an inch and so you think about going from an eighth up to an inch tall. I mean that's quite a bit of growth and so you know I've got to be real careful about how I go about uh, mowing this down. I'm not going to come in here at 1406 after a week and just hack it all down because it'll put a lot of stress on the turf and it's starting to really get warm here. It's averaging mid to high 90s every day during the week and so we've got to pay attention to the stresses that we have because of the time of year as well and so I just want to show you guys how tall this is and uh, I'll talk you through my strategy on how to go about cutting it down. All right, so our grass is overgrown. What do we do about it? And so I've mentioned this before in past videos, but the use of growth, plant growth regulator, it makes all the difference in the world. And so everything I'm gonna be talking to you about today is a result of me using this product several weeks ago. And well, a couple weeks ago, let's not say several, because there is a time frame on this. This stuff, you typically spray it three to four week intervals. And so I sprayed it about two weeks ago before I got busy and before the growing season really kind of kicked in for us. And so what this is, this product is T-Nex, and I have links to all the products I use in the descriptions. If you guys want to check any of that out, you're welcome to go use those links and uh, get the products that you need. And so what this stuff is, is plant growth regulator. And I know the instant immediate thought is, well, it's going to keep my grass from growing. And it's not how it works. I mean, we can dive off into a lot of the science behind it, but to just sum it up in a nutshell is you have cells in your plant that make the leaf blades grow vertically and this stuff makes the cells divide down and so instead of having this long vertical growth that makes it start to grow horizontally that's how you get a really dense turf canopy anyway i mentioned before this stuff guys it's the secret sauce it's what you want to be using i know it's expensive you know, I think it's $150 for this gallon, and I bet I've had it three or four years, and I probably have used about that much of this product because it has such a such a high use or low use rate. You know, you use a very little amount to cover a lot of area. And so if you have large properties, this stuff is great for you. And if you're traveling all the time or you're on vacation, any of those things I mentioned before, this stuff is what you want to use. It allows allows me to mow the putting green about once a week and it still works out fine because I'm like you guys. I'm not I'm not here doing this full time. I've got a full time job. I've got little kids. I've got life going on just like the rest of you. So I'm not mowing every other day like some get to. And so this is how I'm able to keep everything under control. All right, so let's talk about mowing height for a minute. You know, you've all heard the one third rule and there's some legitimacy to that but it doesn't always apply to real mowing. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, let me explain. So when you think about the one third rule, let's think about a regular lawn. Let's say I have a rotary mower. Let's say I've got tall St. Augustine, Bermuda grass, a fescue, something like that, right? 
So you're mowing that stuff up, it's three, four inches tall, and you've got this thick, beautiful lawn, and that's your mowing height. Now let's say it rained and now it's way tall, right? It's five, six inches or whatever. So if you go through and mow all that, you know, you'll get that height down. But if you were to go even lower than your normal height of three inches, what happens is when I get down to say two inches, right? What happens is if this is your three, this is your two, okay? is when you cut all that off, it turns yellow. And the reason it's yellow is because you have this extra inch of growth up there that that's where all the sunlight is. That's where all the green leaf tissue is. And really the rest of it, the rest of the plant down here at two inches doesn't see the sunlight. And so that's why it's yellow. It hasn't developed yet. And that's why lawns look ugly, and especially in the summertime. And the reason why that happens is you get a lot of aggressive growth up here on top. You come through and mow at lower height and everything's yellow you know it's like you you cut all the shade off of the tree i guess you'd say right if you think about a tree you know hack all that off well nothing grows underneath the tree right because i hadn't seen any sunlight it's kind of the same concept so that's why in that respect when you're mowing tall like that you know two inches three inches the difference in that and a one-third rule makes a difference but when i'm mowing with a reel most of you guys are mowing at an inch or less, okay? And I would say that most of you guys are mowing at an inch, probably maintain at a half inch. It, I think that's probably the general for most people. It's probably a half inch with a real mower. Some do three quarter. E either way, when you fall on that range, you're not cutting as much off at one time. You know, the one third rule to me just really doesn't matter that much. And so the reason I bring that up is I told you that the putting green's about an inch tall. I mowed at 1406, so that's 964, just above an eighth of an inch. And so what I'm gonna do is I know from last year's experience that I was mowing at uh, 156, and that's a safe height. I can mow that all the time and not cause any damage on my turf. And so what I'm actually gonna do, and, and see this doesn't apply to that one third rule, okay? So I'm gonna go through and mow this one inch height at 156 and hack the top off. And when I do that first mow, the leaf blades, some of them get rolled over before they get mowed. That's the way a real mower works. And so it's gonna take a bunch of that growth off. And then I'm gonna come back at 1406 at my final height and it's gonna stand everything back up and give it a clean cut. And so by doing that in increments that way, I'm not causing a lot of stress by mowing a huge chunk off at one time. I can go and just kind of take some of the, the bulk of it off in the first run, lower my height down to my 1406, and then I'll, I'll be back to a normal putting height. And it's still going to be a little tall because the blades are going to want to roll over. And so in the coming days, as the sun comes out, the leaf blades start to stand up again and we'll keep mowing it at 1406. We'll be right back at a putting green like we were a week ago. So it's really not that hard to maintain. And that's why I say the one third rule doesn't matter as much, but keep in mind, I'm able to do that, like I mentioned, because I use the plant growth regulator. If I didn't have the plant growth regulator on there and I were to go mow at 1506 or yeah, 156, 156, then you would probably see a lot of yellow and a lot of stress happen. And so that's how I'm able to do that, because of that plant growth regulator. So let's go get the mower adjusted and let's go do a mow. All right, so we're set up for a quarter of an inch. That's what I've been mowing the Bermuda at. And still, surprisingly, it still likes it. I tried a 3 8 inch, inch uh, last week to see what it looked like. It was tall and fuzzy. So I went back to my quarter inch and it's still liking it. So that's where I'm gonna stay for now. So we're gonna go from uh, 0.25 down to 156. And 156 is 530 seconds is what that amounts to. So I need to lower this height down a little bit. So the way I do that is I just loosen this off and I adjust both sides at the same time. A little bit easier that way. I 
around if you'll go at the same kind of the same increments on both sides at the same time like that a lot easier and faster to dial the stuff in than if you spin up one side get it set and you go spin up the other side well then it throws this side off because the reels in there at an angle when you pull one side up and then you raise it up higher on the other end it pulls everything up high so that's why I just try to do them together so that way the the roller moves evenly across there. It's just a lot faster to set this up. Another little tip, little trick I figured out is I'll go a little bit below it and I'll hand tighten these nuts on the side to lock the height down. And then I can take my wrench and lower it just ever so slightly and lock it in. And it's a whole lot easier to adjust it that way because if you don't do it that way what happens there's some slack in that nut and bolt right there and so you get everything set where you want it and then you tighten that up well then it moves your your height a little bit one direction or the other so that's why i found that if i just move a little at a time while locking this down so just like that, within a couple of motions, I'm set, ready to go. So that's 157. Just a little more there at 156. And this side's locked at 156. And I know this probably goes without saying, but always make sure your reel and bed knife are cutting paper, especially when you're overgrown like this. It just helps have a clean cut, cause less damage in the long run, and you'll have much better results by doing that. So you just want to chip both sides, and I'm not cutting paper at all. So time to do a little bit of a back lap before we do that mow. Because if I were to go through there and mow like that, then it would really tear up the green. I mean, it would survive it but we really just don't want to do that. So I'm going to give it a, a quick back lap just to sharpen those edges a little bit. Well, I didn't know this was going to turn into a back lapping video, but here we go. So five hours later, let's go mow the putting green. All right, so. There it is at 156. That's probably two to three times the amount of clippings as it normally would be. And they're not bad. They're only, I'd say majority of them are about a quarter of an inch. So that means I was wrong about it being a whole inch tall, but you gotta remember too that the blades get rolled over a little bit as you mow too. So it makes a difference. So it's not bad at all. So I'm gonna take you out here, show you what I'm looking for when I determine whether I can go lower or not. Okay. So I mowed at 156. So what I'm looking for is signs of stress. So yellow, okay? So this spot I just scalped because this is kind of a high spot here at the end of the green. So that's the type of thing I'm looking for everywhere else. So if I get out here and kind of walk around and take a look, I'll get out here in the shade so you guys can see it a little better. But you can see the turf is green. So there's not any stress going on. But something that drives me crazy is I don't know if you see all these brown spots in here. It's those worm castings I keep complaining about and they are worse this year than they have ever been. The green's like Swiss cheese. There is just little mounds of dirt and holes every, everywhere. So it's almost like I aerated every weekend. So there's holes all throughout here. 
So the turf looks pretty good for not mowing for over a week. And like I said, that plant growth regulator is what makes all the difference. If I didn't have that on there right now, you'd see that yellow all over the place. It would be stressed and it would not take that high to cut very well at all. So now everything looks real good. I'm ready to take it down to 1406, which is our normal putting height. And we'll mow it twice in opposite directions and that will help clean it all up and get us back to putting condition. All right, so I'm at 156. So it's not real far to 1406. So I'm just gonna loosen this off a little bit. There's something I do for consistency. When I'm measuring with this, there's a plate in your reel, there's three of them. One on the left, center, and right that hold your blades together. And so I line up with the same plate on each side in the same spot. That way it's consistent on the bed knife every time I adjust. Because you'll find that there's variations on end to end and in between. So at least here, I know that's a good spot that I can adjust to and get really close every time. So again, I'm leaving these snug to make my adjustments. And when I get close by, I tighten them down a little bit. So I want to be at 140. There's that side. If I adjust this side to 140. So there's a little bit of reason I go about this the way I do. If you go lower than you need to be and then you start backing the screw off it pulls this catch right here pulls it away so that way as you adjust you get an accurate reading of what's going on if you are higher than you need to be and you're pulling the screw in well this catch pin has to lower to get to where it needs to be and what i find that there's a little bit of friction right there and so the bed knife and the roller will be moving but this pin isn't and so i get a really inaccurate reading so that's why i like to go lower than i need and then adjust it back in because it pulls that adjustment pin up all right so there's 140 on both sides so we're ready to go mow again So I want to show you all this. I don't know how well you can see it. So right out here, this is where we just mowed it, 140. You can see how it's nice and tight, like a putting green ought to be. And this section right here next to it, that we haven't cut yet, it's 156. You can see how fuzzy all that is. So even though I'm adjusting this by a 64th of an inch, okay, look how different that is and how much a difference makes by going a different mowing direction. So that's why when I tell you, you're mowing with putting green, you take extra caution about the fine adjustments because every little 64th makes a huge difference. So we've mowed it at 140 and everything is looking pretty good. And so there's no yellow on the tips. That's what we're looking for, there's no stress. There's no hot spots that I see, especially right in this area. This is where some of my hot spots are and they're not showing signs of heat stress where they're purple. So everything looks good. So we're mowing diagonals. Now we're gonna come back and just mow straight back and forth again. That'll give us the last cleanup pass. And you guys may be wondering why I have this sheet of plexiglass back here. And it's just so I can make my turns back here without... A lot of times this is wet, and so I'm getting mud all over my rollers. So I started laying that down, and it'd be a great thing to have too if I ever get grass to grow in right here. It won't tear up the turf. So that's what that's all about. It's an old drum shield, believe it or not. So pretty cool idea there. Lay that down to protect the turf. So 
now we finished that last pass. The clippings are real fine again, like they should be. And that's what you expect to see when you're done with all that. And this surface is ready to be putting on again. And so, you know, even though it's been over a week since I've mowed, everything's okay. But like I mentioned before, the key ingredient is using that plant growth regulator. It makes all the difference in the world. You know, if you're one that travels a lot or, you know, you're like me, you got kids, you don't have time to mow every night of the week or every other night of the week, check out that plant growth regulator. It makes a huge difference. It makes far better use of fertilizers, whether it's liquid or granular. It makes, it just makes the uptake so much more impactful and you get more use out of it. And, you know, if you pay attention, like during the summertime, just walk through your neighborhood. What happens, everybody mows on Saturday, right? And by Sunday, Monday, everything is yellow and it looks terrible because it's under a lot of stress. And what it is, is they're mowing off all that top green growth that happens in the summertime. That's what warm season turf enjoys. It grows during the summer. And so that's why that green gets hacked off all the time. But if you use the plant growth regulator, you'll notice you won't have such a surge of top growth. And everything stays green deep within the leaf blade. And so when you mow, everything looks good. And you don't have that nasty yellow look in the summertime. So if you're one that travels, or you've got kids like me, and you can't mow every other night, or even a couple times a week, look into that plant growth regulator. I'm telling you, that stuff is a secret sauce. You know, it's not just for putting greens. It's not just for bent grass. I use it on the Bermuda. I especially use it on the Bermuda. I use that a lot on the celebration Bermuda out front, and it keeps everything under control, and it just keeps things looking good. It keeps it from getting scalped. Cause like I mentioned, I'm mowing that Bermuda at a quarter of an inch, and sometimes during the heat of summer and some of the stress kicks in, it might be three eighths of an inch. So that plant growth regulator is key to that. And last year, I experimented with being diligent about spraying that stuff out every three weeks and it made a huge difference. I couldn't believe the difference. I mean, that could have been an experiment all in itself, but it, it really it truly does make a significant difference to your turf quality and just the way things mow. You know, it's a lot more enjoyable because I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't enjoy mowing when it's been over a week because it takes so much longer to mow because there's so much more grass. It doesn't look good. You gotta mow it twice. Like, I, I dread it. I don't enjoy it. So. That's why I use that plant growth regulator. And so, anyway, enough on the plant growth regulator. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope I didn't jump around too much. I know I probably was a little scatterbrained because there's a lot I'm thinking about when mowing low on putting green like this, when it hasn't been mowed in a long time. And if you're just out there mowing your front or backyard at a half inch, three quarters of an inch or whatever, you know, don't stress over it as bad as I am over this right here. We're talking thousands of an inch over here. You know, just mow your yard, it'll be okay. Just look for signs of stress and let that be your guide to determine if you can lower the height of cut or not. So anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one. We'll be back soon. Like I said, we're seeing a busy time of life right now, but we'll keep putting out some videos. You guys hang tight with me. It's gonna be a great summer. But that's gonna do it for this one. We'll see you in the next one. All right, so the turf looks pretty good, considering, I mean, you know, 